so I'm up here in Cobalt, Connecticut, and I'm tracking down an old legend that was told in the 1780s by the president of Yale, Ezra Stiles. And he had recorded a early legend that dates back to the mid 1600s of an early governor of Connecticut, John Winthrop Jr. Mining gold on this hill called Great Hill and casting it into rings. And I'm up here on the hill looking for a LIDAR anomaly that I picked up on the on LIDAR that appears to be some sort of mine working that may have something to do with this legend. So Ezra Stiles was told about this hill by um, Governor Trumbull and he was told that this was the place, this hill that I'm standing on right now, was the place where John Winthrop Jr. would come here and resort with his servant and spent weeks assaying metals, roasting ores, and casting gold rings. So this is such a bizarre story. So I kind of thought that maybe he was panning gold from the stream. Down below this hill, there's a stream where there was once a cobalt mine. Um, that was after John Winthrop's time, but there, I mean, there's you could find gold in very small quantities in streams in Connecticut. It's been done before. So I assumed, yeah, maybe he was just panning some, some gold from the stream, but the story really mentions assaying metals and roasting ores. That's not panning. That's hard rock mining. I'm probably standing on the same place where Winthrop once stood and looked out over this new colony of Connecticut and just wondered what mineral resources were to be had here. Imagine this is a completely untouched wilderness and your main highway is the Connecticut River seen off in the distance there and you're just coming up this river maybe on your way to Hartford and you want to explore the region for minerals, mineral resources. Well, it's a pretty level land out there and I'm standing on the one promontory that has bare exposed rock. This is probably where you would go to look for minerals. You'd probably dock your sloop or boat on the uh, side of the Connecticut River there and hike inland and see what ores could possibly be found here. And as the story goes, he did find gold on this hill. But uh, what I'm looking for today is maybe possibly a spot where some rock was removed. Uh, it seems like kind of an impossible thing to find on a hillside that's a complete jumble of rocks. So there's nothing in the legend that says when John Winthrop mined the gold here on Great Hill and cast it into rings. We don't know if it was before he became governor of Connecticut. We don't know if it was well after when he was older. We know that the colony of Connecticut granted John Winthrop Jr. all the rights to the minerals within the colony that was not already within the boundaries of a of a established town in 1651. We know that the town of Middletown, which is right across the river, granted him all the rights to the minerals within the town of Middletown in 1661. But these grants did not include gold and silver, so there would be a perfectly valid reason for him to keep anything he found to himself and not let that be known to um, people who might want to exert more control on the colony. Um, so we don't know when. I would guess that it was probably sometime in the 16, in the 1650s or 60s. Oh, there's so many nooks and crannies everywhere. I mean, there's little caves everywhere. That, and that actually brings me to another, there's another interesting thing around the time of Ezra Stiles. 
1787, there was a newspaper article that, uh, a, where a cave was discovered here in Chatham. And you can see how many possibilities there are for caves on this very hill. But this cave was discovered and it was full of stolen merchandise that was uh, taken off a sloop, probably in, over in Middletown, and stashed in the cave. And the cave had a crawlway that was just big enough for a person to get inside, and which led to a larger room where there was a fire pit. And that's where the stolen goods were found. And I know that Middletown did have a little bit of a history of smuggling during the Revolutionary War, so it's, it's possible that it was a uh, some smugglers that um, were from Middletown and they hid their goods here. But uh, that may be out on this hill too. So we're, we're looking for really anything interesting. The first thing would be obviously any signs of mining, but I would certainly take a cave if I could find it. And it looks like there's lots of nooks and crannies to look into here. Look at that ledge behind me. This looks interesting. Uh, no, too small, I think. I don't think so. If I check out every one, I'll be out here way past dark. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go right for my LiDAR coordinate. I'm just gonna go right for what I have marked as a possible mine. Wow, okay. All right, now this looks like some sort of prospect. If it were me, if I was out here looking for something interesting, this is exactly where I would go to. There's a vein of quartz sticking directly up out of the earth. Wow, it's kind of confusing. It looks like a vein sandwiched between two other... Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of it. It's certainly some sort of vein that's... Uh, outcropping on the surface. <sighs> yeah, this is probably what I would be prospecting if I were up here looking for ores. And plus, this is directly on Great Hill. I mean, this is, if the legend has any value at all, this is directly on the side of the face of Great Hill. If there was gold here, why was this never developed? Why was it never prospected by the people mining cobalt. But did John Winthrop ever actually mine gold ore and cast it into gold rings? I mean, if he did, these, this prospect may have been where that, that gold was taken from. So here's kind of a rough uh, John Winthrop timeline that pertains to this, uh, today's hunt. So, uh, in 1651, he was granted the rights to all mines not already uh, within the boundaries of a town. In 1657, he became governor of Connecticut. In 1662, he got the Connecticut Charter from Charles II, which was a really um, generous charter. And in 1661, so the year before he got the charter, he was granted the rights to all the mines in Middletown. So could these events, these mining related events have anything to do with John Winthrop getting the charter? So, I mean, he may have seen some promise in these hills, in the hills of Connecticut, whereas, you know, Massachusetts really didn't have too many minerals, um, but he may have seen promise of mineral wealth here. And there's really no record of him ever mining anything in Connecticut. There's nothing that says he removed a single ounce of ore. But why was he given the specific rights to Middletown and we just happened to be across the river from Middletown? Then there's the, the legends of the gold rings being cast on this hill and the assaying and, and roasting of ores on Great Hill, and to top it all off, this hill 
that I was on today was once called the Governor's Ring. So, a lot of really interesting clues, but no hard evidence, unless the prospect I found today could be assayed and determined that it has even the slightest amount of gold. If that were to happen, I think we would know where, I think we would know that there was some truth to the story. If that prospect on the governor's ring on Great Hill had ore that contained gold, I think we would have an amazing story to tell about the early history of Connecticut. But until that time, we'll never really know. And we'll just keep on tracking down these early uh, stories and legends.